Welcome. In this video, I am going to present a FECO trap. Conjunctival peritomy has been done. Now the conjunctiva tenons is dissected posteriorly so that a large posterior blade can form. And then mild wet field cautery is done. Care is taken just to touch on the blood vessels and not to cause any contraction of the scleral surface. Very mild cautery just over the blood vessels. A triangular area has been selected and now this is the incision. This is a triangular incision with its base at the limbus and now this is almost a half thickness incision and now I'm going to use a crescent blade to dissect the flap so this is the flap is dissecting it more than half of the flap is dissected by the crescent blade and now I take the 50 number bird perker blade again hold the flap with a tooth forceps and very carefully I go towards the limbus at this time my aim is to make the flap thicker at the limbus so that there is no button holding of the flap. Yes, we have reached the blue zone. And now the FECO is done. This part of the video is first forwarded only one side port is done at 2 o'clock the incision is at 10 o'clock capsulorexis is done then hydro dissection and hydro delineation visco is injected and now the feco needle is introduced with its bevel down then the bevel is turned towards the cornea the nucleus is divided into some fragments by direct chop and the nucleus is emulsified using ultrasonic energy the epinucleus is also managed and now cortical cleanup is done and the cortical cleanup was done with the help of a Simco cannula. The subincisional cortex was removed going through the side port. A hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens is implanted using irrigation. Because I want to use pilocarpin now if I use visco, I have to remove the visco and then use pilocarbon. Inject a bubble of air and then inject a pilocarbon. And now I'm going to use a bit of mitomycin, mitomycin C. Just touch the under surface of the scleral flap and the mitomycin C soaked cotton ball is placed where the blade will form underneath the tenons it is kept for about one and a half minute about 90 seconds and then the cotton ball is removed and the area is nicely irrigated and now 
the air bubble is removed and the iris is pulled superiorly so that the area for peripheral iridectomy is more. And now I am using a 11 number bird pucker blade. Two parallel incisions have been given and now I am through and through. And now this is how I cut the scleral tissue to make an window through which aqueous humor will come out. And now a peripheral iridectomy is done. I am using the rexis forceps to hold the co hold the iris. And here it is. A nice peripheral iridectomy is done. And now sutures. Three sutures are placed. This is one. And now one more suture is placed near the base on the left side. And another one on the right side. These three sutures will be permanent sutures, not releasable sutures. And this is two on on knot. The sutures are trimmed, threads are trimmed and the knot is buried in the scleral tissue. Now the knot on the left side is placed two one and on suture and now this was loose so I'm making another knot two on and on Cut the threads near the knot and the knot is buried. And this is the another permanent suture on the right side near the base. The idea is not to form the blade near the limbus. That's why these two sutures. The blade should be posteriorly and now this is the releasable suture on the left side comes th from the conjunctiva and here it is, it is placed. Uh, now another releasable suture on the right side. You can see a big PI this releasable suture is not yet tied. I'm just going to s observe how much leakage occurs. This is anti chamber lavas to remove visco. I'm taking care not to come near the corneal endothelium. This is closer of the side port at 2 o'clock. And now the releasable suture on the right side of the triangular scleral flap is being placed three loops and just pulled and the releasable suture is done. Cut the thread near the knot. 
the portion which is outside the conjunctiva if we just pull it the threads threadable switcher will come off the superior brittle switcher has been removed and the conjunctiva is advanced as much as possible and now a position of the conjunctiva to the limbus placed an air bubble to maintain the intraocular tension this is 2 1 and on mode 2 on on not this is not to be not I'm not going to bury these conjunctible sutures I'm going to remove these conjunctible sutures after about 2 weeks and these are three matrix sutures this is the first one comes from the limbus goes back to the limbus and this is one on on knot just one through this is another one and then another one so this is the first matrix suture and now the second matrix suture comes from the limbus to the conjunctiva and goes back from the conjunctiva to the limbus and the knot is married knot is made on the limbus one one another one so this is on 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 matrix suture now this is the third matrix suture and see the how beautifully the conjunctiva is opposed to the limbus And now one more suture is placed here. This is going to be a releasable suture. Releasable suture means just three loops and pull and cut. And now the air bubble is removed. This is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The air bubble is removed, the antechamber is formed by balanced salt solution and the case is concluded. Here are some post-op pictures. See how quiet is the anterior chamber. The people is small because I used pilocarpin. The cornea is clear. See the blave. How beautiful is the blave. The intraocular pressure is 16 millimeter of mercury. Unaided vision is 6 by 12. There is no corneal edema anywhere and the patient is very happy. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Please do FACOTRAV in patients, in cataract patients with optic nerve damage going to glaucoma.